Hi, I'm Daniel Antman and today I'm joined by Craig Parker from our Corporate Ratings Group to talk about uh, the Outlook for Real Estate Investment Trusts or better known as REITs. Welcome Craig. Hi Daniel. So the first question is uh, maybe you can talk to us a little bit about what is the Outlook for REITs in the Asia Pacific region? In our recent review, Daniel, of the Asia Pacific REITs, which we rate about 60 plus REITs in the, uh, in the region, we, we believe that they have a, um, a relatively stable outlook. Um, the majority of them um, are unstable, uh, there's a few on positive outlook. Um, the negative net bias that we, we talk about in our Asian portfolio, they um, have a relatively low negative net bias of 2% relative to the Asia Pacific corporates of 11%. Um, and the other uh, interesting point that we, we've highlighted in our review is that um, the ratings volatility is expected to be lower compared to um, other industries. Um, the average rating is around A- minus, as compared to the uh, average rating for the whole of the Asian Pacific corporates is around triple B. So Craig, is Standard & Poor's worried about any particular types of risk? Again, Daniel, in our recent review, we found that the um, our macroeconomic um, outlook is for higher interest rates. That has a significant impact on REITs earnings. Interest is one of their major costs, and if the interest costs are going up, as we're predicting they would, they would um, that could have potential negative impacts on their earnings and ultimately their ability to uh, meet their interest obligations and repay debt. Um, we don't think that's a major issue for our rated sector. Our rated sector, as I highlighted before, is in the A- minus um, average, um, and as a consequence, they have uh, adequate to strong um, financial capacity to withstand a higher interest cost burden. Um, this also has a flow-on effect, though. Um, it, higher interest costs mean that they flow through to the, uh, the tenants who are leasing the space in these REITs, um, and that also could potentially dampen the demand for their um, product and also dampen, the obviously, the supply of new product that's coming onto the market. So Craig, do your base case assumptions take into account a, a higher interest rate burden? Dan, they do. Um, in our recent review, we highlighted that um, with the um, forecast increasing interest burden that um, we're, we're forecasting across the region, that that should um, be reflected in our base case assumptions. Those REITs that have got sizable floating uh, rate um, debt profiles, they are more vulnerable. Having said that, there is, um, as I highlighted before, an A- minus average across our REIT portfolio. So they've got a strong to adequate credit profile that actually um, enables them to withstand um, you know, volatility within the interest uh, costs. Um, and as well, a number of those REITs that we rate have got um, buffers within their financial policies to be able to withstand um, an increasing um, interest burden which flows through to our our coverage measures that we focus on. Well, finally, Craig, um, we've seen some M&A activity in the sector. Does that mean risk is returning? Risk has, has been prevalent in the past um, year. Um, there's been some sizable um, mergers and acquisitions in our rated portfolio. We're getting the feedback from our, our, our managers that they're wanting to um, stand on the sidelines from this M&A activity. Asset values are being bid up, they're becoming um, what they consider to be probably overpriced. And in fact, it's offering them an opportunity to see this as an ability to offload some non-core assets because of the, the asset values being, um, being bid up. So uh, we, don't, we don't see it as being a risk to the sector. Uh, we still think that the uh, managers are undertaking M&A activity that's consistent with their operating strategy. And uh, a number of this, um, these M&A activities have been either credit neutral or credit positive. Um, and um, as a consequence, we don't believe that to be sort of a major risk factor over the next 12 months. Okay, well, thanks very much, Craig. Well, that's all we've got time for. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Just a quick reminder that uh, information on this topic can be found on Ratings Direct, which is on our website through the Global Credit Portal, www.globalcreditportal.com. A quick uh, final reminder as well that this information is only intended for wholesale clients. If you would like further information about this, please visit our regulatory affairs page at standardandpause.com. Thanks for watching.